Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In the previous video, I had shown you how to add the blogger data to this design. So here we can see all this data that you see over here is from our blogger website. So if you go back to the blogger posts, here we can see the first post is how search engine works. And here we can see we have the title over here. We also have the thumbnail of the post over here. And if I click on this uh, title, we are taken to that post. So now we can see that all the data of our blogger website is displayed in our design. Now in this video, I'll show you how to load a limited number of posts in the home page. And we will also add a button called load more posts. And if I click on that button, we will add the next set of posts. We are doing that because if we have a lot of posts in our website, then it will take a long time to load those posts. So what we will do is we will just load six posts at a time and then we'll add a button for loading more posts. So we will do all of that in this video. Let's get started. First of all, let's go ahead and design the load more posts button. So let's go to our main design and let's go to the source code. And here after this division, I'll just create a button and we'll just give it a class of load more button. And here I'll just type load more posts. Now if you go back to our design here, we can see we have this uh, load more post button. Now let's style it using CSS. So let's go to the styler CSS file. And here let's type load more BTN. And we'll get a background color of black. And uh, let's set the color of the text to white. And uh, we'll also remove the border. And let's also add a padding of, let's try 48 pixels. And let's also set the width to 100%. Right now, let's set the font size and let's set it to 14 pixels. And we'll also set the text transform to uppercase. And we'll also set the font weight to 800. And let's also add letter spacing. And let's set it to 4 pixels. And we'll also set the cursor to pointer. So let's type cursor pointer. Right now let's add this button to our blogger website. So let's go to our theme. And let's click on this arrow and click on edit HTML. And let's go to our HTML code. So here's our HTML code. I'll just add the new code over here. So I'll just copy this line of code from here. And let's paste it over here. Right now let's add the CSS of this button. So let's go to styler CSS file and let's copy all this CSS from here. And let's go back and let's go to the CSS. And here I'll just paste the new CSS code. And we'll also add a little bit of margin to the top of this design. So let's add that as well. So here for the blog post container division, let's type margin top and let's try 60 pixels and let's save it and let's go back to our website and let's refresh this page and here we can see now we have the margin and if you scroll down we also have the load more posts button right now the first thing we will do is we'll just limit the number of posts that get fetched on the first go so let's go back and let's go to our javascript code so here's our JavaScript. Let's scroll down and uh, if we take a look at this uh, script, here we can see we have this link and uh, we are adding a callback function over here. Now we are getting all the data using this link right here and uh, we are calling this fetch all post function over here. But now we want to access this link again and again. So on the first go, we will have just six of these posts and uh, we need to call this link once again. So for that, we will use the fetch API in JavaScript. So let me show you how a fetch API works. The first thing we need to do is uh, we need to type fetch and we need to pass the link that we need to fetch. So I'll just call this fetch link and then we need to type dot then and here we will get the response. So I just call the response res. You can call this anything you want and this will be an arrow function and uh, we will convert this response into a JSON format. So let's type res dot json and then we need to type then once again 
and here we will get the data in JSON format. So I'll just call it data and this will be an error function as well. And here I'll just call this function called fetch all posts and I'll just pass this data. So let's type fetch all posts data. Right now the next thing we need to do is we need to create this fetch link variable. So I'll just copy this link from here. It will be almost the same and let's scroll up and let's create a variable over here and we had called it fetch link and I'll just set it equal to this uh, link and we will use backticks for this because we'll also add some variables inside the link. So I'll just use backticks and let's paste the link over here. Now here we don't need to have any callback function so I'll just delete this from here and we also don't need to have JSON in script because we are using the fetch API. So I'll just delete this and I'll just type alt equals JSON. Now we need to add two things over here. One is the max results and the next is the start index. So let me quickly show you what it means. Let's go ahead and type feeds forward slash posts forward slash summary alt json and here we will add an attribute and it is called max results and uh, we need to set that to a number. I just type 2. We also need to add the start index. So let's type ampersand and let's type start index equals and this also needs to be a number. So it starts from 1. So I'll just have 1 over here and I'll just add one more ampersand for the alt json. Right now let's press enter and here we can see we have this result. Let's scroll down and let's see how many posts we are getting. So here we have the entry and this is the first post and this is the second post. So we are getting just two posts from here because we have set the max results to 2 and if we set the max results to 3 let's see how many posts we get. So let's fold this, fold this and fold this and now we can see there are three posts in this entry array. So we can specify how many results should be fetched from this uh, feeds API in blogger. Now if we open the first post and if we take a look at the title here we can see we have this title how search engine works so this is the latest post and if we scroll down and if we open the second post and if we scroll down here we have this title what is on my office desk and this is the next post and let's open the third post and here we have this title VR things to look out for right now let's go ahead and change the start index to let's try 3 and let's press enter now let's go ahead and inspect the data. So the first entry is this post right here which we had in the last place in the previous result. So this is VR things to look out for. And the next entry is the next post from our blogger website. So this is basically how max results and start index work. Let's go back to our code and let's go ahead and create two variables over here. One will be for the start index. So let's type let start index and we'll start with 1 and next we need to have the max results I'll just create a constant for that and let's type max results and the max results will be 6 in our case right now let's add these details in this link so here let's type max results equals and uh, we will add this variable called max results I'll just type dollar symbol curly braces and let's type max results and let's type ampersand and uh, since this is XML we have to type AMP semicolon and let's type start index equals and let's add the start index variable so let's type dollar symbol curly braces start index and we will add one more ampersand for the alt JSON so let's type ampersand AMP semicolon so this is basically going to be the link to fetch so if we scroll down here we are using this variable fetch link now let's go ahead and uh, comment this line of code and now let's see whether the data is being fetched so let's save this right now let's go back to our website and let's refresh this page and now we can see we have these posts displayed over here and we have just six of these posts displayed now let's add the functionality to load more posts so let's go back to our code now the first thing we need to do over here is to change the fetch link and for that we need to update this start index 
So we will do that in uh, this function right here called fetch all posts. So once we fetch all the posts, we will also do some other things over here. We need to go ahead and increment the start index by the max results. So let's type start index plus equals max results. So since the max results is 6 in our case, the start index will now be 7. And then we will update the fetch link variable. So let's go ahead and copy this from here. And I'll just go ahead and paste it over here. Now we need to add these two lines of code inside an if block because we need to check whether there are any more posts. So let me show you how it works. Let's just open the website. And let's add the link over here. And we'll also add the max results. And let's also add the start index. And let's press enter. And here we can see we have this data. But if you take a look at this link array, if you scroll down, in the last object, we have this uh, object called next. And we have this uh, link over here. This is basically the link for the next number of posts. So here we can see the start index is 7 and the max result is 6. So let's click on this link. Right now let's scroll down and if we take a look at the link array, here we can see we don't have the next object over here. We just have the previous one because we don't have any more posts. We just have seven posts in our blogger website. So what we can do is we can just check whether the next object is available in this link array. And if it is available, we can go ahead and fetch the next post. But if it is not available, then we can go ahead and hide this load more post button. So let's go back to our code. And let's go ahead and create a variable over here called next link. And I'll just set it equal to data dot feed dot link. So it is this link array right here. Now we have to check whether the next link variable has this uh, next object over here instead of previous. So let's type if next link and we need to take a look at the last index. So let's type next link dot length minus one. So this will give us the last index and we need to check whether the REL of the last index is next. So let's type dot REL equals equals and uh, let's type next and let's add the following code inside this if condition. Now if the condition is false, we need to just hide the load more button. So let's type else and uh, here we need to hide the load more button. So we have to first of all reference that in the JavaScript. So here let's type const load more btn equals document dot query selector. And we had given it a class of load more btn. So here we have this button. So let's go ahead and uh, here let's type load more btn dot style dot display equals none. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to add an event listener to this load more button. So let's type load more btn dot add event listener and we will listen for the click event and let's create an arrow function over here. Now here we just need to fetch the next link. So I'll just copy these lines of code from here and I'll just paste it over here. Right now let's save this. And now let's go back to our website and let's see whether it works. So let's refresh this page. And here we can see we have these six posts over here. Let's click on load more posts. And we have the last post displayed over here. And now we don't have the load more posts button displayed over here. So everything is working all right. Now if you go ahead and go back to our code, and if I just change the max results to three, let's see whether it works. So let's click on save. Let's go back to our website and let's refresh this page. And here we can see we have these three posts. Let's click on load more posts. And we have the next three posts displayed over here. And if I click on load more posts once again, we have the last post displayed and uh, the load more posts button is hidden. Let's also check the responsiveness. And uh, it is also working all right. So that's basically how you can add a custom design to your blog list in your blogger website. All right, so that's basically it for this video. I hope that you found this video useful. And if you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. 
Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day. Thank you.